The Fisher Type 480 is a typical piston operator. It consists of a piston disc and an O-ring for a seal. There are also seals at either end of the piston. The piston operator derives its superior power from the fact that air supplies from 35 to 150 pounds are applied to the piston, whereas the spring-opposed diaphragm type had 15 pounds maximum applied. An integral positioner, the Fisher type 3570, applies supply air on one side of the piston or the other. The instrument, 3 to 15 PSI input signal, goes to the positioner. The positioner compares the instrument signal with the valve stem position and takes appropriate action to move the piston and ultimately the valve plug to the desired position. The positioner can be compared to an automatic four-way valve that moves the piston by applying air supply to one side of the piston while venting the other. The positioner consists of the following, three pressure gauges, two relays, two flapper nozzle assemblies, a bellows, and two springs. The gauges are marked cylinder top cylinder bottom, and instrument pressures. The relays are pneumatic multipliers. A pneumatic relay senses a small pressure change and multiplies it to a proportionately large pressure change. The relays in the 3570 positioner multiply by four. If 10 PSI is sensed at the relay input, the relay will produce 40 PSI of output pressure. The input to the relay is produced by a flapper covering a nozzle. The relay has a restriction that bleeds a small amount of air supply. This small amount of air escapes through the nozzle. If the nozzle is covered, the bleed air path is blocked, resulting in an increase in pressure. A diaphragm senses the rise in pressure and opens a relay inner valve, letting air supply flow to the piston operator. The bellows receives the instrument signal. It expands or contracts in proportion to the respective increases and decreases in the instrument signal pressure. The bellows has no bleeds, hence the instrument signal is dead-ended. The dead-ending of the instrument signal is one of the factors responsible for the piston operator's fast response to signal changes. To affect a valve stem position change, the instrument signal has to move a very small bellows rather than a very large diaphragm. The bellows on the Fisher 3570 positioner can be inverted to change the action of the valve. This spring is called the bias spring. It determines the starting point of the actuator. This spring is called the range spring. It determines the stroke of the actuator. Adjustment procedures will be discussed in a later lesson. Now, work exercise 9 in your workbook. Now we will consider the Fisher 3570 positioner operating sequence. Assume that the instrument signal increases. The bellows expands. A flapper uncovers relay B nozzle. A flapper covers relay A nozzle. 
Relay B output decreases. Relay A output increases. The piston is forced downward until the range spring pulls the flapper against relay B and away from relay A. Relay B increases output, relay A decreases output. When rebalanced, the pressure on both sides of the piston are approximately equal. The piston type actuator will not fail safe on air supply. For instance, if the air supply tubing to a furnace gas valve broke, the valve must fail closed to protect the furnace. To enable fail-safe, additional equipment must be added to the piston operator. Some manufacturers put a spring inside the actuator. The spring will push the piston upward or downward upon air supply failure. In addition to the spring, the process fluid flow can be routed under the plug to help the valve fail open or over the plug to help the valve fail closed. The Fisher 470 actuator requires a pneumatic trip valve and a volume tank to fail piston up or piston down. The 470U fails up, the 470D fails down. The Fisher 470 piston operator requires a type 164 regulator and two lock-in valves to lock up or fail stationary upon air supply failure. The actuator is called a 470L, L for lockup. The trip valve on the 476U and D operates when the air supply falls to a preset value, usually 60 to 75 percent of the normal air supply. When trip occurs, the stored air in the volume tank is routed either to the top or bottom of the piston, thus raising or lowering the piston and holding it there. The system will automatically return to normal when the air supply pressure returns to normal. Can you see how the 470L operates? When air supply falls below the preset value of the Type 164 regulator, the lock-in valves operate. When they operate, they block the relay to piston lines. The piston cannot move. Now, work exercise 10 in your workbook. This is another type of piston-operated valve actuator. It is a Conoflow Cono motor. The positioner output opposes a loading pressure furnished by the cushion loading regulator. The cushion air pressure is analogous to the activator spring in the spring-opposed diaphragm actuator. The cushion loading regulator bleeds as the piston moves down. The pressure the cushion loading regulator supplies is constant. A Conoflow Model J positioner controls the Cono motor. The operation of a direct acting Model J positioner is as follows. Assume the instrument's signal increases. The yoke moves to the right. The ball in the pilot nozzle assembly restricts the pilot chamber opening. This action is very similar to a flapper covering a nozzle. The pilot chamber pressure increases. So the pilot diaphragm moves to the right. The exhaust valve closes. The supply valve opens. The piston moves downward, forcing the cushion loading regulator to vent. The range spring is extended. Its tension increases. The increased tension on the bell crank exerts a force from right to left on the yoke pin. 
This force opposes the instrument's signal, balancing the system. Counterflow positioners can be direct or indirect. In addition, they can be made to fail safe by the addition of a capacity tank. The tank contains a stored volume of air at supply pressure. The tank air is sealed bubble tight by an O ring check valve. This stored air pressure on the cushion side of the piston provides positive valve opening or closing upon air supply failure. Many control valves are process actuated. They sense the process itself rather than receive external instrument signals. The process also actuates the valve. Here's an example. This is a Fisher 67R reducing regulator. The function of the valve or regulator is to reduce a varying air pressure to a constant pressure. The spring compression determines the desired pressure. The process supplies the feedback that acts against the spring. To explain the operation of this device, assume you have connected a source of clean air to the regulator. You have not turned the air on as yet. The spring is pushing the pilot down. Now, assume the air is turned on. It passes from the inlet to the outlet. The air pressure on the downstream side continues to build up pressure until it exerts enough force against the diaphragm to raise it. When the diaphragm raises, the pilot valve shuts off the supply source. The force of the spring and the downstream air pressure seek to balance. Any change in the spring setting or the upstream or downstream pressures will result in an unbalance, a resulting pilot movement, and then rebalance. Now, work exercise 11 in your workbook.